Hello, everyone. Welcome to Advancing Adventism. Now, the guy you see on the slide there, Joseph H. Wagner, uh, he was an early SDA pioneer, and I just wanted to make sure that you don't get him confused with E.J. Wagner. That's his son. So J.H. Wagner is the father of E.J. Wagner. And uh, most people, most SDAs today are more familiar with E.J. Wagner. I just want to make sure that we're all clear on who we're talking about. So Joseph H. Wagner, an early SDA pioneer, he is the first early SDA that we have on record as indicating that he was inclined to believe the Holy Spirit is a person. Now, everyone acknowledges that early SDAs were anti-Trinitarian, and J.H. Wagner was among them. He was an anti-Trinitarian, and even though he held that view, he was still not thinking that that meant the Holy Spirit can't be a person. He actually uh, was inclined to think the Holy Spirit was a person. We're going to be looking at that. But first, here's a couple things that um, let us know for sure that he was an anti-Trinitarian. So here we have an article that was printed in um, November 10, 1863, where he's explaining why a Trinity or the doctrine of the Trinity degrades the atonement. And here's a book published in 1884, where in chapter six, he's also explaining how the doctrine of a trinity is subversive to the atonement. Now, I'm not going to be quoting from these. I will, however, have links in the description where you can go and read them if you would like. And I, you know, we're, we always encourage people to delve deeper, use the links that we have in the description as they are designed to guide you to help you do your own personal studies. Okay. So, um, as you can see, he was definitely opposed to the doctrine of the Trinity, but it's important to realize that the reasons early SDAs had for being anti-Trinitarian are different from the reasons modern SDAs who are anti-Trinitarian typically give for why they're anti-Trinitarian, okay? So again, early SDAs had different reasons from the reasons typically given by modern uh, SDA anti-Trinitarians. Now, early SDAs regarded the question of whether or not Trinitarianism is true as a separate question from whether or not the Holy Spirit is a person. Okay, they were just two different things considered on you know, independently from one another. And as I said, some early SDAs, even though they were anti-Trinitarian, were even inclined to think the Holy Spirit is a person. And this is one of them, Joseph H. Wagner. Again, like I said, he's the first early SDA that we have on record as stating that he's inclined to believe the Holy Spirit is a person. Now, we find this in a letter that he wrote in 1879 to James White. And in this letter to James White, J.H. Wagner expresses that he was not satisfied with a couple of articles that D.M. Canwright had written about a year before. Okay. And in those two articles, what he's explaining that he's not satisfied with is that um, D.M. Canwright had written against the personality of the Holy Spirit or against the idea that the Holy Spirit is a person. Now, here are those two articles um, by D.M. Canwright. Now, these are the first articles written by an early SDA where it's openly and purposely arguing against the personhood of the Holy Spirit. Now that's pretty surprising, right? Because again, all early SDAs were anti-Trinitarian and they wrote a lot explaining why the doctrine of the Trinity was, you know, subversive of the atonement or just not true in general, right? They, they had different angles that they would take, but they wrote a lot opposing the doctrine of the Trinity. And yet it wasn't until 1878 where we have the first printed article arguing against the personhood of the Holy Spirit. And 
This is what J.H. Wagner was referring to in his letter the following year to James White. And he says he was not at all satisfied with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to be reading just a portion of this four-page letter that J.H. Wagner wrote to James White in 1879. And please pay close attention to what Wagner is saying to James White. And remember, Wagner's also a Trin an anti-Trinitarian, right? But as you'll see, he wasn't thinking that this means the Holy Spirit can't be a person. So here's what Wagner wrote in his letter. Now, this isn't from the very, very beginning, but you'll be able to um, read the whole letter. I'll provide links. So here we go. But there is one query which will arise in my mind. It is on the question of the personality of the Holy Spirit. Now, you see that underlined there, and that's because in his handwritten letter, he had it underlined. So all of the underlining and any uppercase stuff, that was original to his letter. And um, when you use the link to check out the original letter, you can also see a transcription there that the White Estate has available. And um, just pay close attention to the handwritten letter too. You know, there's, there's a few typos, a few little mistakes that were made. Um, but overall, it's a very good transcription. So anyway, so he says, there is one query which will arise in my mind. It is on the question of the personality of the Holy Spirit. The more I think of it, the more I am inclined to believe that the generally received view is correct. Now, of course, the generally received view about the personality of the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit is a person, right? That's a generally received view amongst Christians. So, He's like, the more I think of it, the more I am inclined to believe that the generally received view is correct. I will not stop to criticize the language of the Testament. We know that the word spirit in Greek is in the neuter gender and in Hebrew feminine. The Hebrew has no neuter gender. But it is generally conceded that the authorized version is correct in using masculine pronouns when referring to the Holy Spirit. Instance, John 14, 16, 17, and 26. And of course, that's chapter 14, verses 16, 17, and 26. We ordinarily use it instead of he. Perhaps it is allowable. But to it are ascribed attributes of personality as power intelligence, emotions, it instructs, guides, moves to speak or do, is grieved, etc. But most of all, we are baptized into the name of the Holy Spirit. Now, before moving on, we're, there's a little bit more I'm going to read here, but just, you know, let's just take note of this. He's saying that to the Holy Spirit are ascribed attributes of personality or attributes of personhood. And those attributes that indicate personality or personhood, he lists as power, intelligence, emotions, and um, instructing, you know, guiding, moving upon people to speak or to do. Um, the Holy Spirit is grieved, etc. But then he says, but most of all, so of all these ascribed attributes of personality, most of all, we are baptized into the name of the Holy Spirit. So he's giving these reasons for why he's inclined to think the generally received view that the Holy Spirit is a person is actually correct. And again, this is still while being anti-Trinitarian. So let's go on. I was not at all satisfied with Elder Canwright's articles in the signs about a year ago on that subject. Of course, the signs, there's the signs of the times, right? The periodical, the signs of the times, and the subject being the personality of the Holy Spirit. So he was not at all satisfied with Elder Canwright's articles on that subject. I consider the style entirely faulty. Many of his arguments, and especially his illustrations, were highly irreverent to my view. It is the most solemn subject upon which we can speak, according to Matthew 12. 
one of his numbers I would not circulate in the tent for fear of the influence on unbelievers. I could not approve of it. His intention, of course, was right. And then I'm skipping a paragraph and we'll pick back up here. He says, as much as I have studied on this subject, and you know that for years my study on the spirit has not been small, I am not prepared to take a positive position. I am yet a student or an inquirer ready to be convinced by sufficient reasons. I can appreciate this, that to remove the spirit from that position assigned to it in the scriptures would be no small error. Perhaps in the light of Matthew chapter 12, verses 22 to 37, no greater error could be committed. It is this which has for years prevented my speaking with positiveness on the subject. I move tremblingly where there is so much to inspire reverence and awe. Okay, now before kind of moving on to more details of what we read in the letter, let's just think about this. Like what great principles of investigation uh, that he just expressed here, how much reverence we should have when discussing these sacred topics. But it's interesting to note that even with having such reverence and awe, clearly he was trying to understand it. He was doing his best to see what do the scriptures reveal about this subject, the personality of the Holy Spirit. And so he was definitely striving to understand it. But in so doing, without knowing for sure what the right stance was to take, he had refused to state positively in, in any public way whether or not the Holy Spirit definitely is a person or isn't a person, right? And this approach with such reverence to the subject is something that I hope we will all really, you know, take note of. I mean, you know what it's like today when so many times people just enter into debate about topics. Uh, you know, if there's any kind of difference of view on a subject, oftentimes people are very, very quick to engage in a debating spirit and to be, um, as I discussed in another uh, video on the channel, be sharp and denunciatory, which Ellen White explicitly spoke against, right? So these are just really important principles. If we want to arrive at truth, the spirit with which we come to the investigation of the scriptures will determine the character of the assistant that is by our side, right? So I just love that J.H. Wagner is expressing this very important uh, right principle. But with that in mind, let's do a quick kind of recap and summary. It's important to take note of some key things that Wagner said in his letter to James White. He said, the more I think of it, the more I am inclined to believe that the generally received view is correct. So here again, even while being anti-Trinitarian, J.H. Wagner was inclined to believe that the generally received view about the personhood of the Holy Spirit was correct, that the Holy Spirit actually is a person. And remember, this letter to James White was written right in the midst of other publications by J.H. Wagner that express anti-Trinitarian views. So again, they were just two separate things in his mind. Anti-Trinitarian did not equate to automatically denying that the Holy Spirit is a person. He was very open to the idea that the Holy Spirit is a person. He also said, to it, to the Holy Spirit, are ascribed attributes of personality. And then he goes on to explain. So not only is he just expressing that he's very open to the idea, he is going so far as to provide his reason for being so inclined, right? And the reason he's giving is because in the scriptures, the Holy Spirit is 
described as having attributes that persons have, right? Attributes of personality, of personhood. And what are those attributes of personhood that he lists as part of his um, explanation and giving reasons for being so inclined to think that the Holy Spirit is a person? He says attributes of personality such as power, intelligence, emotions. He explains that the Holy Spirit is described in the scriptures as, you know, instructing, it guides, moves to speak or do. The Holy Spirit is grieved, etc. And then he says, but most of all, we are baptized into the name of the Holy Spirit. So clearly he's giving his reasons for why he's inclined to believe the Holy Spirit is a person. With all that said, we will be talking about this topic, about the personality of the Holy Spirit and how early SDAs viewed it. We'll be talking about all of that more on this channel in future videos. Uh, but I want to mention that this is very closely connected to another topic. The topic is the personality of God. And this is actually one of our pillar doctrines as SDAs. And it's something that the early SDAs wrote a lot about. And we already have several videos on this channel that are going through what early SDAs said about the personality of God. And uh, specifically from the angle of explaining how did they use the word person and its variants, because if we want to know what they taught about the personality of God or the personality of Christ or the personality of the Holy Spirit, we need to rightly understand how they defined the word person and variations of the word person, like personality and impersonal and all that, those sorts of variations of the word person. So I, I hope you'll be sure to check them out. And um, if you haven't subscribed already, uh, go ahead and do that and click the bell so that you'll receive notifications of our new uploads when we publish this new content. So thank you so much for joining us. Many blessings. Have a wonderful day.